Phew! I am out of breath. Let me get some air. Air is vital for us as it contains oxygen. Oxygen is used to break down the food we eat into energy. This energy in turn is used by us for various activities like running, walking, swimming and cycling. This lesson is about the process of respiration. By the end of this lesson you will be able to define respiration, differentiate between aerobic and anaerobic respiration, explain how glucose is broken down, define ATP, define diffusion, Explain the process of respiration in plants. Explain how the respiration process in aquatic animals is adapted to their environment. And explain the process of respiration in human beings. I don't understand. We breathe in oxygen but breathe out carbon dioxide? We breathe or inhale oxygen which then diffuses into the tissues and breaks down glucose and produces energy. This results in the formation of carbon dioxide and water. The carbon dioxide gets eliminated from the body but the oxygen remains behind. This process of inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide is called breathing and the metabolic process for producing energy is known as respiration. Carbon dioxide is present in atmospheric air. However, when we exhale, we breathe out a greater amount of carbon dioxide than the amount that is present in the atmospheric air. Exhaled air is composed of 5.6% carbon dioxide whereas inhaled air contains 0.03% carbon dioxide. Let's try to prove this through an experiment. Take two test tubes containing freshly prepared lime water. Blow air through the lime water in the first test tube. Use a syringe to pass air through the lime water in the second test tube. You will observe that in the first test tube, the lime water turns milky immediately. You will find that it takes longer for the lime water to turn milky in the second test tube as compared to the first test tube. This proves that air contains less carbon dioxide than the amount that we breathe out. Even microorganisms release carbon dioxide. Let's try out an activity to demonstrate this. Take some fruit juice in a flask and add some yeast to it. Fit the flask with a one-hold cork. Fit the cork with a bent glass tube. Dip the free end of the glass tube into a test tube containing lime water. You will find that the lime water turns milky. From this activity you can conclude that microorganisms release carbon dioxide. Yeast acted on the sugar present in the fruit juice and released carbon dioxide. This process is called fermentation. Glucose can be broken down both in the presence or in the absence of oxygen. All higher animals need oxygen to break down glucose, while some microbes break down glucose in the absence of oxygen. Food in the form of glucose 
breaks down into carbon dioxide and water. Since this process takes place in the presence of oxygen, it is known as aerobic respiration. Organisms that break down their food in this manner are called aerobic organisms. There are a few microbes that break down glucose into alcohol and carbon dioxide. This process takes place without oxygen and is hence known as anaerobic respiration. Such organisms are called anaerobic organisms. In both aerobic and anaerobic organisms, when respiration takes place, a glucose molecule that contains six carbon atoms is broken down into a molecule that contains three carbon atoms. This new molecule is called a pyruvate. This entire process takes place in the cytoplasm of the organism. In aerobic organisms, the pyruvate molecule is further broken down in the mitochondria of a cell. In this process, the pyruvate molecule that contains three carbon atoms is broken down into three molecules of carbon dioxide and three molecules of water. Sometimes our muscle cells may not have enough oxygen. In this case, the pyruvate molecules are broken down in the anaerobic process. Pyruvate molecules get converted into lactic acid, which is also a three carbon molecule. This lactic acid builds up in our muscle cells and causes cramps. Both aerobic and anaerobic respiration releases energy. This energy is used to combine adenosine diphosphate, ADP, and inorganic phosphate to form adenosine triphosphate, ATP molecule. ATP is the molecular currency for the transfer of energy in most cellular processes. The energy released in the aerobic process is 19 times greater than in the anaerobic process. When the terminal phosphate linkage in ATP is broken using water, energy equivalent to 30.5 kilojoules per mole is released. The energy from ATP is used for cellular activities such as the contraction of muscles, protein synthesis, and conduction of nervous impulses. Stomata are small openings seen on the lower surface of the leaves. The leaves have large intercellular spaces in between the mesophyll cells. This ensures that all the cells are in contact with air. Carbon dioxide and oxygen are therefore exchanged through the stomata by diffusion. Diffusion is the process by which a gas from an area of high concentration will move to an area of relatively low concentration until an equilibrium is reached. During the day, carbon dioxide generated during respiration is used up for photosynthesis. Therefore, carbon dioxide is not released. Instead, oxygen is released as a result of photosynthesis. At night, photosynthesis does not occur but respiration continues. Therefore, only carbon dioxide is released. Animals have different organs for respiration depending on their environment. 
animals that live on land take in oxygen from the atmosphere. Aquatic animals, on the other hand, use oxygen that is dissolved in water. I wonder why goldfish open and close their mouths so many times. Fish take in water through their mouths. This water has dissolved oxygen in it, which diffuses into their blood. The water is then forced out through their gills. The amount of dissolved oxygen in water is much lower when compared to the amount of oxygen in air. So, the rate of breathing in aquatic organisms is much faster than in terrestrial organisms. This is why a fish opens and closes its mouth a far greater number of times as compared to the number of times you breathe in and out. Terrestrial animals have special organs for taking in oxygen from the atmosphere. All these organs have a structure that is in contact with the atmosphere. This structure increases the surface area for diffusion of air into the organs. The surface of this structure is very fine and delicate in order to allow diffusion of gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen. Since this surface is delicate, it is placed within the body. There are passages in the body that transport the air to this surface, allowing diffusion to take place. I have a cold. I can't seem to breathe properly. In human beings, air is drawn into the body through the nostrils. Nostrils are lined with fine hairs and mucus that filter the air as it passes through. Next, the air travels through the throat and then moves through the rings of cartilage called the trachea. The trachea ensures that the air passage does not collapse. From here, the air passes through the bronchi before entering the lungs. The bronchi are like a network of tubes that keep branching into smaller tubes. At the end of each bronchus, you will find balloon-like structures called alveoli. The alveoli provide a surface for the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The walls of the alveoli contain a massive network of blood vessels. When we breathe in, we lift our ribs and flatten our diaphragm. As a result, the chest cavity becomes larger. Air gets sucked into the lungs and fills the expanded alveoli. The oxygen in the alveoli is taken in by the red blood cells in the alveolar blood vessels. The oxygen in the red blood cells is then transported to all the cells in the body. The cells in turn release carbon dioxide which diffuses into the blood and is then released into the alveoli. It is difficult for oxygen to reach all parts of the body through diffusion in larger animals. Hemoglobin, a pigment present in red blood cells, binds with oxygen from the air in the lungs forming oxyhemoglobin. Later, through oxyhemoglobin, oxygen is distributed to tissues all over the body. The tissues in turn release carbon dioxide which diffuses into the nearby blood capillaries. Carbon dioxide is more soluble in water than in oxygen. Therefore, carbon dioxide is generally transported through blood as bicarbonate which is its dissolved form.